What's up guys and gals and welcome to the Nerd Castle for the first episode of This War of Mine. This is a game that I touched on previously in the press release version where you play about 12 days and it's a game that I've been very very pleased with. It's a game that I had a lot of fun playing and it's a game that I think is quite unique by comparison to a lot of other survival games. Everybody knows that survival games are the bell of the ball right now when it comes to indie gaming and this one takes it in a completely different direction. This War of Mine puts you in control of a number of survivors who are in a war-torn city which is presently under siege. Inside the game files, the game refers to itself as Kosovo, and so I think that that was like the working title of the game, which gives you a pretty good idea what this is based on. Now there are parties when you start out the game, it's randomly generated, you get certain party members, certain groups are better than others, and in order to make this playthrough profitable and also I think survivable, I went ahead and I started a playthrough but I'm only on day one so basically this right here has the party members that I like best based on my experience. I've still never had a, had a gun ever in the press release. I've never found a single gun. I found a pistol and I fixed it but I had no bullets and that's only happened one time so I think guns are not going to be easy to come by so I'm not experienced with the firearm system in this game just because I've played a lot of the game now and I've still never had a gun. So I'm figuring we'll probably figure that out along the way, I hope. I hope we figure it out along the way. I mean, it's pretty simple. Point that direction and pull trigger and hope bullet hit. I mean, I'm a little bit orky about the whole thing. I kind of just spray bullets in every direction, hope that they hit something. So when I click continue, this is a fresh game, but it's got the party members that I like best. So if you end up with the old lady, there's, there's a couple party compositions at the beginning that are very, very suspect, where if I get them on my playthrough, I'm just like, eh, and I'm not completely, totally stoked about finishing the game and so in order to keep me very enthusiastic I took my favorite party members and made sure that they were all nice and arranged for this playthrough. We've got potty words all sprayed up on the wall in front of our house just to let people know how we feel about the present situation although the world seems to be made out of smoldering material so yep I wouldn't be too pleased either we have a bicycle at least that's something to be excited about. I like bicycles. Who doesn't like bicycles? How long has a siege lasted? It's hard to say, whenever day is a struggle for survival. city is crawling with snipers. Shelling's ordinary business almost every night. The phones don't work and there's a shortage of food and meds. And many people are left homeless. Bruno and Marco have always been good friends, so when the war broke out they decided to stick together. They met Pavla while scavenging for supplies. He used to be Pogorin's fo star football player, now he's just another homeless victim of war. So they teamed up, hoping for the best. In my experience, this is the best starting team that you can get. Now certain configurations you can get four people starting out, I don't like that actually. I prefer these three, and you can swap in the cook for the journalist, I like her as well. I think the cook and the journalist are, are about equally useful, but by and large you really really want Bruno. If you don't have Bruno, your playthrough is definitely hurting. So what we need to do right now, let's hold on and hang out. So the first things that we need to do is we really, really, really need to make sure that with this first day, we get as many things done as possible. Now, I can see through this fog because I'm used to the game, and so I know what each of these things are, but I just want to make sure that I'm plotting out my adventures here properly because time does go very, very... Oh, we started with a chair. That's pretty sweet. Okay, so I'm going to send him to go scavenge that. I'm going to send Pavla down here to scavenge that. I need him to check this door. Is it locked? Okay, it's locked in this playthrough. I need him to... Let's go up to the top and he's going to scavenge this. Now, these piles right here have all the good stuff that you want to start out with. So, for example, we've got 10 componentry. Componentry are used for just about everything. I mean, you can't get anything done without componentry. Wood is occasion... It Wood has a lot of uses, but when it comes to construction and like the day-to-day -day stuff, like getting water, you're going to need a lot of componentry. So 10 componentry and 10 wood. That's a pretty good... That's a pretty good starting run right there. I'm pleased. And so he's already done right there. Go ahead and clean off that... Ooh, 20 componentry and 19 wood. I think they may have buffed the starting parameters. I've never... Oh, never mind. We didn't get anything. Oh, that sucks. Okay, never mind. We didn't get buffed. Buffed definitely did not happen. We are feeling quite emaciated at the moment. Alright, well I'll have him get started on that right there. He should be able to get it cleaned out by the end of the day. He'll clean off that right there, which will allow him to break into that room. On this side, we've got some herbage. And so the herbage has a couple of different uses. You can use it for like makeshift cigarettes, but it appears to be some kind of bush that's growing a mushroom out of the end. I don't know, smoking mushrooms might make us unproductive for the rest of the day, so we might want to hold off on that. And I'm almost guaranteeing a bad trip given the circumstances. I'm Given what the place looks like that we live in, I don't think that a good trip is probably going to happen. Let's go ahead and pop open that drawer right there. On this side, we're going to get two more herbage. 
Okay, we're a little bit weak off right now. I'm not real excited about what we've got. Our wood supply and our component supply are looking decent, but we're not looking absolutely incredible just yet. Now, occasionally this door right here is locked. What I want to use Pavla for now is we will have him. He's slightly sick and who's wounded? You always start out with a wound and a sickness. Okay, so that's locked. So unfortunately, he's not going to be able to get into there. So instead, I want him to work on that. On this side, we've got a little bit of food, so I think food is going to be our main problem up front. We have not picked up a lot of food so far. Typically, I like to have three or four food at the outset of the first day, and unfortunately, we're already looking a little bit skimp. Which means that since food and water tend to be the two things that you're really, really struggling to obtain in this game, it puts us on a weird footing straight away at the beginning of the game. It puts us in a, in a bad footing, to be honest. Let's go ahead and have Pavla hit that. Maybe we'll get something out of there. Let's not get too down about it just yet. I think we might still be okay. Okay, I could be wrong. So, we're going to have to barter, we're going to have to trade, and we're going to have to make this work. We didn't get any sugar. We didn't get any food. By and large, in fact, we have done fairly poorly as far as scavenging for useful food items goes. But we've done very, very well with supplies. So, I think that my first goal here is let's go ahead and take Pavla while he heads down here to handle that. I'm going to have Pavla start constructing things. Now, I always use this big room down here as a bed center. And so what I'm going to do is we're going to make two beds down in here. And that should be all that we need for most of the game. Two beds will make it so that you should be able to keep a good rotation of people sleeping going for every single day and never have anybody be tired. So what I do when I play this game and what I recommend that you do, you build the two beds and you have rotations during the day where people sleep so that at night you can always have two people on guard and you can always have somebody out scavenging without having to worry about, you know, it allows you to have the most optimal guard shift on this side. He's almost done with the scrap and the nastiness up there, which is good. This is definitely a scrappy situation, although I think you might have a serious tetanus hazard when you're moving all this stuff around. Don't cut yourself right now because we have absolutely no way to fix that. That would be really, really awful for all of us. The other thing that I'm a little bit concerned about is that we have no way to make anybody feel better. We have no meds and we have no... Yikes. We have no meds. We have no... Oh, there's another food right there. Okay, so we've got a little bit of food. Not a lot, but a little bit. Not a lot of bit. It should be enough. It looks a little bit skimp. I hope that bone is a lot bigger than it actually is, which is sort of a sentence that I didn't expect myself to be saying at this point. But you know what? Every now and again, you got to wish for a bigger bone. Let's go ahead and take another bed, and I'm going to drop it down in here. I know people are going to disagree with this decision, but bear with me. I think I, I've got a pretty good idea for what... I mean, I've made it to the end of the press demo with maxed out food, maxed out supplies and everything else using exactly this strategy, and I've never been robbed the entire press demo. Like, somebody got wounded one time around day 12, and so I've got a reasonably decent idea of how to make this work. Largely, this plan is going to be modifiable based on what we find and don't find while we're running around. But, hopefully we'll be able to make it work. That's locked, right? Okay, so that's locked. It's not going to be that helpful to us. Let's go ahead and we'll clear the refuse off the front door right there. We do have a chair, which is sort of interesting. I've never built a chair before. I don't know. In a world where we don't have food to eat, a chair seems like the kind of luxury that... I don't know. I just don't waste my time on, I suppose. But like, sitting? It's the daytime. You're not supposed to be sitting. You're supposed to be running around doing my bidding, minion. Alright, so he's up there, he's prying that off the wall with his bare hands because he's a muscly fellow with hair on his knuckles. And so he got that done. That's all taken care of. It looks like we've actually just about cleared out the locality at the start of the day, which is really, really good. That's actually something you do want to aim for, and so that leaves me here. Let's make a... What do we have supplies left for? Well, we have supplies left to make a radio. The radio can be useful for predicting things, but I don't tend to make the radio very often. I, I just don't. I think that this is bugged from what I can tell right here. No, it's not. Never mind. I get what it's saying. I get what it's saying. Making a, a moonshine still early on in the game is a pretty good idea, as well as a metal workshop so that you can make yourself lockpicks to get into the other parts of the house that you can't get into. And in fact, I think I am going to start with... Ooh, it's a tough call. It's a very, very tough call. I think... The two options that I'm stuck in between right now are the metal workshop and the rainwater collector. The rainwater collector allows us to make these filters down here, which will then allow us to purify water 
and make sure that we always have access to just the most bare basic survival need, which is digestible liquids that will not make us sick. And so unless you want an amazing case of Jardia or you want to sit around with diarrhea for weeks at a time, definitely want to be purifying your water, although the rainwater collector seems like it takes a lot of materials. I think I'm going to go with it since it is going to be paramount when it comes to keeping our moonshine still going, which is very important for later on and just keeping ourselves running. So I think I'll go for the rainwater collector first and we'll offset some of the other things that we need tomorrow. So let's go ahead and we'll get Pavla on that. Let's make sure that there's not anything else we can craft with the supplies that we have on hand or the supplies that we have on retainer, whatever you want to say, you know, on supply, I guess. We can make a filter. I am going to make that right now because that means that we can get the rainwater still going as soon as it's up. Over here, there's nothing outside, right? Okay, I just wanted to make sure that there was nothing out there that I might want to take control of. Go ahead and hang out, pal. You can go pop a squat. There ain't nothing left for you to do anyways today. What is that? Wine? That's a new icon that I've never seen before. So, to go through some of the things that are going to be important later on. And there we go. Let's go ahead and swap that out right there. We'll make ourselves some more water. Basically, what's going to happen is this is how long it takes to get going. You get four water out of it, and then it's got a long cooldown before you can use it again. Now, we've already run out of supplies. We've used up everything on the first day, which is what I recommend that you do, in fact. You should definitely make sure you try and get as many things done in the first day as possible. Was hoping that we would get some kind of herbal remedy because he's slightly sick. The herbal remedy can help that go away, but if he gets any more sick... Unfortunately, we're going to have to find pills, which are expensive and hard to barter for. On this side, he's slightly wounded. You don't have to worry about slight wounds for the most part. Slight wounds you can leave on a character. They don't affect much. They don't affect his movement speed. They don't affect anything else. But if he gets any more wounded, we need band-aids to fix that. The time runs until 7 p.m. each day, and then you have your nighttime phase. We did really, really well on the first day. We don't have any canned food. We have a little bit of raw food. We have no veggies, and we have no wine. We, it's not a great start, but I think it's a start that if we adapt and we make sure that we heavily... Oh, it goes till 8 p.m., never mind. If we make sure that we heavily optimize the things that we're grabbing while we're out scavenging tonight, I think we can make it work. You get one safe location to scavenge from at the end of the first day, and that location is going to be the sort of place that you really want to pick clean. It's usually called, yeah, the shelled cottage, and so it's basically, you know, the little... What are the little shell guys called in Mario Brothers? Well, anyways... I, I always forget what they're called, but that's like what they live in. It's a shelled cottage. It's a cottage with like one of those stylistic Mario shells on the back. I'm not going to have anybody sleep because the plan that I usually do does not require people to sleep at night. They sleep during the day. We're going to send Marco out to scavenge. This is the reason right here that you want Marco. He can carry such a ridiculous amount more than everybody else that it really does suck if you don't have him in your group. I sincerely, I very much prefer to have Marco, if at all possible. Let's go ahead and we're going to go to the shelled cottage. There are a number of places we can go but they all look a little bit risky. This one says that it's dangerous. A decrepit squat. There's a huge amount of materials there and a lot of weapons. That might actually... I've never gotten that before. There's no danger there. So any location that you could potentially get killed at will at least try and warn you by putting danger or caution or very dangerous at the bottom of the list. Watch out for that. If you go to a location you're not ready for, you may just lose a survivor and... In my opinion, I find three to four to be the perfect amount of survivors. If you're lower than that, you can't really get stuff done, and you get robbed a lot. If you have more than that, then you've got too many mouths to feed. So I tend to keep it somewhere around three to four people, and then I deny everybody else just in the terms of optimal play styles. Let's start with the shelled cottage. If this is the house with the old folks in it, we're going to rob that too, because the old folks, it says danger, but they actually don't fight back. They run and they go hide in the backyard while you rob them, and so... Sometimes you gotta be an animal to survive in this game. You better get used to that real fast. Just remember they're video game characters. That's what I try and do. It makes me feel better about the whole thing morally. Alright. So the house is on fire. And we've got a little bit of time to work with. What I want to do here... Oh god, there's a dead guy just hanging out. Just hanging out by the window. Well, hanging out of the window, I guess. What I prefer to do is I try to gather all of the stuff in one location. So what we'll do is we'll kind of peek our way through all of these different piles. And... Yeah, that's a lot of materials right there. Hell yeah. And so what I do is I stack everything at one location so that when I come back in, I don't have to waste a ton of time doing this. You should always look through keyholes. That is an enormous rat, and it's kind of flat, actually. It's got kind of like a weird badger thing going on. I don't know. They always look Badgers always look kind of flat to me. Let's go ahead and grab this right here. This should be the food source. Yes, there it is right there. Very, very nice. A big old crop of sugar. A lot of water. So this right here actually just solidified us for a very 
very long time. This is probably going to be the food supplies that we use for the first four to five days of our gameplay, believe it or not. You don't have to feed your guys as often as some people seem to think you do. You can really kind of let them starve down a little bit before you solve those problems. We've got a bunch of sugar. That's going to be incredibly important because we're going to be building a still pretty soon because liquor is one of those things that you definitely want to spend your time trading for. It's a very, very good plan to trade as much liquor as you can as early as you can. We have a bandage. We also have some meds so that we can get Pavla better. Very good. Fantastic. They are herbal remedies, so I think that they come with some sort of baseline chance to fail. But still, it's better than nothing. It's better than doing nothing for them. I do think that I should bring some materials home with me tonight because there are going to be things that we want to build going into the next day. But in the interest of... Oh... There's a locked door. I've never seen that happen before in the first cottage. In all of my playthroughs, this is my sixth playthrough, I guess. I've never seen a locked door in the first cottage. Interesting. So we're going to have to come back for that. There's a bunch of debris piles as well that we can't get by. I've never seen this many debris piles in the starting area either, which is sort of an interesting turn of events. So basically, you don't have enough time to dig out these debris, fi these debris piles during the nighttime. You just simply don't have enough. You can do it, but it's sort of boring, and I don't really want to do it on camera. Instead, what I prefer to do is make my first couple nights as efficient as possible. You see those little things radiating off of me? That's the amount of noise that I'm making while I'm running around. This guy just... God. Poor dude. That is not the position to die in. It seems like it would be rough on the ribs before you finally reached your expiration date. I don't know. I would prefer dying like someplace soft, like a feather bed or something, you know? Even if I had been, like, shot or wounded. It's just my preference. I don't know how much of this stuff I should bring. I'm going to drop the one water because that's a waste of a stack. And how much wood did we have left? I'm a little bit inquisitive as to how much wood we had left. You can't stack wood very high, unfortunately. We don't need this much sugar on this run, so I may leave the sugar right here. I don't think anybody else will come back and steal it. It should be okay, I think. And so we'll bring a bunch of wood with us too, but this is a really, really good first load. Like seriously, this is precisely the kind of load that you want to drop in the living room. Not if you want to keep pleasant company though. Don't drop a load in the living room. That's bad advice by Splattercat. Marco has returned. And so Marco is back. Marco is front. Marco is in the house. And we enter Dia Dos. So he's going to come back in. Sometimes you can pay attention to what he says. So he says, I brought the bandages. Let's see that wound. We're actually not going to do that. We're going to let him just be wounded because we don't really care about it. It's a slight wound, which isn't a big deal. So now what we want to do is these guys are tired and hungry. We want them to retire right this second. Like at the outset of the day, the first thing that we want to do is have them go to bed. Next, what we want to do is we want to go back down here and we want to get started on the extra construction stuff that we want to have along the way. We're going to need a lock pick when we go back. Or we could force the door. I couldn't tell if the door was jammed or if we needed to unlock it. I think it was jammed. So let's go ahead and we've got 16 of that. Let me figure out how much we need for the metal shop. The metal shop. Oh, we don't have enough for the still yet. Okay, so we need more parts, unfortunately, for the liquor still. That's not good. So let's go ahead and let's get while the getting's good. I'm going to make a metal shop right now. So that at least we're working on something and we can start clearing the other areas of the house by lockpicking these doors. I, that was not expected and that's unfortunate. I need more parts and there weren't any parts in that building. That's what I'm a little bit worried about right now. You also want to pay attention to the temperature. You have roughly till day 10 and then you got to start using a furnace to build things. We may be able to barter our way into some better stuff but for right now... Not totally happy about the way that we've started out. I... Yeah, and it's going to cost us parts to make lockpicks, too, so we kind of need to be productive if that's going to happen. The crowbar could help us break into some stuff, and it's a little bit cheaper, but it takes us 10 componentry, so we need more componentry to make that. So, unfortunately, still not a real viable option. Let me look around the house real fast to figure out what we can and can't do. I'm not going to feed anybody till tomorrow. I know it sounds cruel, but bear with me. Believe me, I do have a plan here that we are going to be working towards. And so we can either pick the lock at the house or we can break the lock. I think in the interest... Which door do I want to force down here? That could be... Let's make ourselves a lock pick, I guess. It's... It's a questionable plan. 
but it's one that I think will work out. I think I'm going to take a chance on it. I'm going to take a chance, take a chance, take a chance on lockpick, you know, just get like into that ABO mode or whatever. And so once he's all done right there, we will go unlock this. We will unlock this. If you're wondering what the difference between the crowbar is and the lockpicks are, the lockpicks are quiet. The crowbar is really, really loud. The benefit of the crowbar is that you can break down multiple doors with it, and you only get one door out of the lockpick. So I think I'm going to start. We know there's a locked door in there. Let's start with this thing since we already have easy access to it. And then over there, we know that we need a lockpick as well. So I think I'll probably do these two doors today. I'll get that one, and I'll get that one. And then I'll have somebody get to work clearing out this rubble. We'll check inside that cabinet. Maybe we'll be able to get some of the supplies that we need. I, you can't see my hand motion right now, but I'm putting my hand flat and wiggling it back and forth as though to say, eh, it could go either way. You know, just to elucidate what I'm thinking right now, because I use a lot of hand gestures when I talk. That's just me. We've got another band-aid. Not bad. We've got books. Fuel. Don't save books ever. Just turn them into fuel. They're more useful as fuel than they are to anything else. On this side, he's now up from his nap, and as you can see, he's no longer tired. That means that we need to put Marco to bed right this second. We'll give him a nice little jog. He sleeps with his backpack on. We keep trying to tell him not to do it. He does it anyways. I'm not really sure how to convince him otherwise. I don't think we're going to get any visitors today. I've, I don't think I've ever gotten a merchant on the second day. If we get a merchant, I don't really have anything to give away either, so... Unfortunately... We don't really have much to barter with at the moment. Until we get the moonshine still up, we're a little bit stuck. Yeah, I know you could really use a shovel. Unfortunately, we just don't have the materials at the moment. So in the long term, what I would prefer to do is, since we have this food right here, I can make really, really good meals for them starting tomorrow. We've got enough food to last a little while, but we don't have... The downside here is that we don't have any canned food. Canned food is actually a lot better. It restores a lot more of your hunger, but it's worth a lot of money. So if you can keep a lot of fresh food on hand, technically you can use it to barter. I don't, because that's just... It's too much of a risk for me. I like to play a little bit more pragmatically and just sort of stockpile things. I also start to get paranoid once we get up to about day 10. I start to get really, really paranoid about supplies because people start to come and steal from you. And so anything you haven't spent or bartered or desperately need is now something else that people could attack you and try and take from you. So bearing that in mind, if I pick up jewelry, for example, sometimes you'll get jewelry from the locations. I usually try and get rid of jewelry as fast as I can because that's something that would inspire people to attack you. You could turn jewelry into a lot of supplies in this game. Or if I have a whole bunch of pills on hand, I tend to defend a lot more if I've had a bunch of pills because they're very, very valuable. We can turn those into large supplies of other things that we want. Well, hopefully this cabinet's got something for us. If this one turns out to be a little bit of a bust... Oh, two jewelry. That's a really, really big deal. So those of you who are not familiar with the game, a little bit of bling can go a really, really long way in this game. You can take some shinies, and you could turn it into some very, very useful loot on the first merchant. Now, the downside to this strategy is the conceivable possibility that we may be attacked tonight. If we get attacked tonight, the first attack is usually not so bad, so it may go okay. Let's turn the book into fuel. The books can be used to raise your morale but frankly I always turn them into fuel and it's never backfired on me yet there may be slight modifications to the gameplay in the new release that may prove me wrong but you know what can I do about that that's something that I don't necessarily know about I think this is a very very good spot for me to break off the episode my name is Splattercat thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle for the next episode or the first episode of this war of mine I look forward to seeing you all in the next episode take care out everybody and I do it's scavenging time when we start up